fluff, a happy little clouds at home is basically to replace Vagrant with something that's more modern, that has a slow, a, a more precise use case. It's not got tons of technical debt. It's not Ruby. You know, it has cloud in it in mind and it plays well with Mac and Windows and the primary workstation tools on Sweet. them. But we're going to kick it off. It's called Fluff, as I said, and we're going to be splitting up work and I'm going to be driving this project as a project manager more than as a contributor, even though I'm going to be doing the, building out the primary core of the framework. Uh, there's not much to it. Great to be a first project contributor to it. We need things like logos. We need uh, people to test things on VMware Workstation on Mac and Windows. Uh, we're not planning Kimu and KVM support, but if somebody wanted to add that, they could consider doing that later. And we're going to look at all those possibilities. Okay, so what is this thing for? This thing is so that you can run one command, fluff start or fluff up, and you'll get you know, one, two, three, four machines that are provisioned with SSH keys and default passwords that you can log into, kind of like Minikube and Kubernetes. And you can just start working and doing whatever you need to do to test or wow. plan. Go look for cloud-init. This is using all the dependencies on curl and everything to do the same thing. This instantiates a, a, a VMware server. It sets up the cloud-init stuff with the template. And it brings up, you know, uh, it pulls down the files and everything in Go. So that's what you need to learn if you want to participate. We're going to be doing all this encoding and go. Uh, again, this project is already Rob slash lab. If you want to go follow, this is the first version of it that already works. We know, so we know this is going to work because we've already got it to work using just bash that project. You can go here and you can follow it. Uh, we follow on a main and you can, or if you want to contribute, you can. Uh, there's not much here right now, but this is where we're going to be adding our issues. And I'm going to be adding those right now about the work that we need done, logos and I stuff. I mentioned L LBG uh, DN, who has been very instrumental in this project. He wrote the original Bash script uh, and taught me open everything I know about open and it. And that is the basis for what we're doing. Uh, also, you know, painstakingly convincing me to do this instead of Vagrant and some of the other options. All right, so I was recently reminded that uh, you can use YubiKey for signing everything. I do this for GitHub and somebody noticed that I did it and asked why I didn't do it for GPG and SSH because I didn't know how to do it for that. And so here's the list on this. The Z on this is uh, need to switch everything to YubiKey and I put the links in here. Going on this, we're not going to accept any contributor uh, PRs or commits until we have the legal stuff, but we put that off for later. I do want to research several, several projects that are already in this space and get that. We have we're going to be documenting the usage tonight, getting that interface done. And we need a logo too. So if anybody wants to do that, like get on it. A service of Docker Compose. It's really, it's it's basically ripping off all the best ideas from Kubernetes and Docker Compose and Vagrant and modernizing them. That's what we're doing. That's all we're doing. We're just shamelessly ripping off all of the best ideas from those projects and making them into something new. Oh, that is so cool. Thank you for saying that. That makes me very happy. That's why I do this shit on a Friday night. <laughs> no, no, seriously, this is fantastic. I think it is. I think Foss is a serious path for getting a job. I think it's really, really underrated. I don't think people truly understand how much it prepares you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I need to extract a section out of the YAML file based on comments because we want the raw YAML file. We don't want to parse the YAML and then rewrite it. We just want that. We're basically looking at the YAML file as a string and then just taking that section to the dev tree um, in, in, in here in init.go. And you can go have a look at this, but here's all the code for that. So, and we... Um, you can have a peek at that anytime. So we created a, uh, a fluff full and a fluff simple with the default being fluff simple. Uh, and that creates uh, two different kind of files. And we wrote the test code, unit test code, using traditional tests um, here to check the files and make sure that what we expect, put everything in test data by default. All right, so the next task is going to require us to do a number of things. So we only want fluff up to be public. But we're going to need to do a number of other things. Fetch, convert, get the ISO, and build a volume. And those we're going to build out as individual hidden commands that people can can pull up if they know about them. Uh, as you know, the fetch is just a, a take on the original that we did already with curl. 
we have a curl command in here that just pulls down the file. That's all it does. Pretty simple operation. It should not take us that much trouble. To fetch something, we have to have something to look up. And that was when I remembered, remember that we have got to do this here. We've got to, we've got to take the YAML file from the YAML, fluff.yaml file and populate it into a struct. We're going to do that now. Go into the internet. It's super easy to do that. And, um, that's something I've been wanting to build in the command box for a long time. So that helps make the decision that I'm going to put the documentation in the description and then we can convert that and, and render it as a web thing in command box later. And that's fine, but it's most, the most flexible. So if you want to parse a YAML file in Go, you have two options. You can either parse it in the flexible way into a map string interface, or you can set up all the structs that you are going to have permanently and you can unmarshal it directly into those structs. That is not a valid or you, you don't provide another field. It will just say, sorry, you're out of here. And you, you, what you end up getting is you get it, you have to do a lot of validation on the structure after it comes in and gets parsed because it doesn't throw any explicit errors. And I, we're going to, we're going to understand what that means here pretty soon. All different ways that people document go things. Sometimes when people document go things, they'll put stuff at the end over here, like I did here. Sometimes they'll put it at the top. Sometimes they'll obfuscate each thing and they'll break it all down like this. Uh, I don't like when they break up all the names. I don't like that at all. It, because when I want to do something, I want to look at the struct and know immediately what everything is. If they want to spend a verbose amount of time describing all this stuff, do that shit in the documentation up here. Don't do it here. All right, I'm exhausted. I've been doing this for 13 hours, so I'm done. If you want to go see what we did, go to rob slash fluff, F-L-U-F-F, -F, and you can check it out and see what we did. Bye.